Hi guys, this is Professor slash Miss Edlin um, doing at around 10.40 on Friday what I wish I'd have done yesterday, um, which was to make, make good on my promise to look at um, the last essay out of three um, of the Montaigne reading. Um, so what I'm going to do, as I said, is to read through this with you guys um, to show you um, how I read something, how slowly I read something when it's, when it's somewhat difficult, um, and to show you how I highlight, um, how I take notes. I'll be pausing as I read, um, in order to, um, in order to help myself understand, help you understand the essay better in order to, uh, define some perhaps unknown terms and to ultimately make, make this little reading, um, which by the way is number eight, idleness of idleness. It's on the last page of the Montaigne reading. Um, <clears throat> make it more accessible to you, make you understand a bit better what's going on so that your second micro theme due on Tuesday is a bit easier for you to construct. All right, so um, here we go. I'm gonna turn the video now onto the reading. Go ahead and pause the video here if you don't have your reading in front of you just yet, and then uh, we'll resume. Okay, so here's the reading. I'm holding my phone with one hand and uh, filming with the other, so, or rather filming with that hand and writing with the other, so it, the uh, camera might be a little, a little shoddy. If I drop the phone, pardon me, because it'll probably be noisy. Okay, of idleness. So idleness is slowness. Not doing anything uh, with your time that is useful, right? Just lazing about maybe, all right? Not doing anything productive. I'll start. This is Montaigne speaking, right? Just as we see that fallow land, if rich and fertile, teams with a hundred thousand kinds of wild and useless weeds and that to set it to work we must subject it and sow it with certain seeds for our service and as we see that women all alone produce mere shapeless masses and lumps of flesh but that to create a good and natural offspring, they must be made fertile with a different kind of seed. So it is with mines. So he starts by saying, just as, just as we see, and then the end of the sentence, so it is with. He's actually setting up a comparison. Just like, a, so it is with B. Okay, so he's saying, just like with land, look up fallow. If rich and fertile, it teems with, it, it grows crazy with a hundred thousand kinds of wild and useless weeds. All right, so if you leave land alone, right, then weeds that are wild and useless, they'll grow all over the place. So if we want the land to be good and fertile, we have to subject it, meaning like we got to do some stuff to it and we have to sow it with certain seeds for our service, right? We have to do all of these things to the land in order to get some good stuff growing on it. And as we see that women, so he's going to compare like these seeds, this plant and women. And as we see that women all alone produce mere shapeless masses and lumps of flesh. I laugh there because he's saying that if women are left alone, they just become like these lumps of flesh. They just become like these lumps of people, lumps of skin if they're alone. Well, that's his opinion, but... He says, 
but that to create a good and natural offspring. So to have, to have kids, you know, um, I guess kind of to be cute too, they must be made fertile with a different kind of seed. Um, he is, I believe here, He's referring maybe to having women having a partner. They need to have a partner. But basically, they also need to, to procreate, to make babies. So if you examine this closely, uh, we know what kind of seed he's talking about. Okay. So it is with mines. So just like we need to do something with land, we have to work hard on it to make it fertile, to make it grow vegetation or whatever. And just like women, if you don't like, if you don't make them cute, <laughs> if you don't um, get them into a relationship, um, like if they don't make babies, they can't have babies. So is it with minds. Okay, so he's probably going to go on to continue like discussing that. All right, right here. Unless you keep them, minds, busy with some definite subject that will bridle, like you bridle a horse, like you put the bridle on it and control them. They throw themselves in disorder hither, like all over the place. And you, or sorry, and yawn in the vague field of imagination. So minds, unless you keep them busy with like some definite subject and you like rein them in and control them, they're going to throw themselves in disorder, hither and yon, all over the place in the vague field of imagination. Unless you rein the mind in and give it something to do, it's going to do what it wants and go all over the place. And then he brings in an example. 